Welcome to the College Admissions Collaborative Highlighting Engineering and Technology College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We do have some fantastic schools with us today. Um, and my name is Nashira Williams. I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, we have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening and scheduled over the course of three days. <clears throat> so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com strivescan forward slash cache. <clears throat> I'd, like, I'd like to now turn it over to our presenters who will be presenting about building your business in STEM. Nice, nice Shira, thank you for this. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Ivy, it's awesome to see you. I'm um, glad to be sort of partnering with you on this one. Um, so my name is Matt Hyde. Uh, I'm the Dean of Admissions at Lafayette College and I'm honored to be sort of in the mix with you all today. Um, you know, I think as you uh, dive deeper into your search for college opportunity, you're gonna become very aware of all the different kinds of settings that exist for you to, to sort of envision your future as a student, as a scholar, as an entrepreneur, as an artist, as an athlete, as an activist, as, all these different identities that you claim, um, it's on you to figure out what, what are the right settings for me. So the point of, of this, uh, this experience, I think over the next you know, half hour or so, really is to help empower you to understand how you can bring your sort of business-minded um, sort of approach to life, your, your entrepreneurial spirit into your college experience. So I'm going to start over the next couple of minutes and talk about um, how you find that fertile ground for um, a situation that will empower you to maybe begin to think about your, your future as a, as a business person, your future in sort of the entrepreneurial space that more and more are becoming part of the lifeblood of places like Lafayette and Case Western. So um, I'm going to share my screen here if I can figure out how to make that magic happen. So bear with me for a hot second. Um, and uh, one second, I need to find my life here. I don't know, that's not helpful. All right, is my screen, can you guys see my screen? You can, Ivy, that's, is that, I see a nod. Okay, excellent. So um, very quickly, um, you know, I've been at Lafayette for, for 10 plus years now. Uh, it's located in Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, an hour due north of Philly, an hour due west of New York City. Uh, but I moved here from the biggest college town in the world. I used to work at a great university outside of Boston and loved living and breathing that space of, of a large city. And you know, there's no doubt that where you're located totally matters. And I wanna, I wanna sort of begin um, sort of in that space. But before you do, um, we need to think long and hard about sort of the culture and mindset of an institution. And I'll, I'll talk about Lafayette as an example, but every college, every university has um, a tone, a tenor, an energy that it's gonna be on you to wrap your head and heart around. And I think, you know, if you're approaching college with this idea that you want to get uh, involved early in, in business ventures and with in putting your entrepreneurial spirit into action, you need to sort of um, sort of approach uh, the search with a willingness to dive deeper into what's the energy of a place, of a space, of a community. So, you know, mindset matters. And I think as a part of your college search, you need to sort of understand that. Um, and at Lafayette, very quickly, you know, the mindset and culture here are shaped by how we honor our namesake each and every day. Uh, Marquis de Lafayette, you may or may not know um, who he was, and I'm hoping if you do, it's not just because of a hit Broadway musical, <laughs> but um, our namesake was, was essentially 19 years old when he changed the world. So I value the fact that we don't allow students at Lafayette just to retreat into our space and say, you know what, this is about me and my learning. The rest of the world can wait. I get there when I get there. At Lafayette, we're like, oh, hell no, you count matter right now. And it's on you to sort of own that fact and own the opportunity and obligation you have to inform your presence, to inform your voice and take action with your life and with your learning. Don't bide your time and don't wait for just jumping through hoops just to go to college. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? So the mindset of Lafayette really is about understanding what it means to have true wisdom. And in honoring our namesake, it's using your smarts and your talents to benefit other people. Whenever I need to be inspired, I love rolling up into our archives, actually right over here in this building. Um, we have the, 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 the original letters passed between Washington and Lafayette. And in reading those letters, it's so clear to me that our namesake was an early abolitionist. He was an early suffragist. He was a man way ahead of his time, who was unafraid uh, about, of investing his time, his effort, his energy, his intelligence to make the world better, not just for him, but for others. So he has a, an intelligent, fearless, action-oriented approach. 
Um, and I think for those who are thinking about business and entrepreneurship, like that's what you need to have. You need to have a community that's willing to sort of uh, empower you to have ideas, to take chances with those, with those ideas, to make mistakes, to explore those mistakes and what you have to learn from them um, and go big with them. So our, our rallying cry was actually Marquis de Lafayette's motto. That's Latin, kernan, which means why not? You know, in, in our mind, that spirit of why not empowers our students to realize that anything is possible. It is. But it's on you to bring the energy, to bring the interest, to bring the intelligence, and to bring that willingness to take action. So, so, so that's the culture of, of Lafayette. And, you know, it's going to be different everywhere. You know, we're the only ones who can really claim this namesake who was on the right side of history on all fronts. Um, but I value that, you know, this culture of action orientation and leaning into life and learning with more fearlessness and aggressiveness is a part of who we are. So I think our prospects will get to know that. And those who have an entrepreneurial mindset or are thinking about sort of business adventures, like this is, is, is fertile ground. But in the same way, case is as well for, for many similar reasons, but also different. Um, and you'll hear about that in just a, a few minutes. Um, so mindset matters, but so does context. Context is key. You know, what's the, what's the feel of the institution um, as we've talked about, but also what opportunities exist there uh, for me and, and what's the setting for it? So, you know, Lafayette is an intimate um, liberal arts college, a powerful one that exists nationally, but it's different. It's different from, you know, all the other colleges and universities out there, you know, lots of similarities with both, you know, big flagship universities, but also a lot of similarities with very intimate small liberal arts colleges. So at Lafayette, the concept really is a liberal arts college that pushes students beyond the ivory tower. You know, we don't want students just to, to, um, to sort of absorb knowledge. We want them to create it. And in our places, in our spaces, you're a known quantity as a distinct individual. You know, small student faculty ratio, you know, uh, 229 uh, terminal degree professors who see it as their job to engage, entice, and inspire you as a distinct individual. You know, here's a fact. Each and every one of you, you have a narrative, you have a voice, you have a story that's distinctly yours. And at Lafayette and in great colleges like it, um, we engage you as you, not as just some random that's here. So, you know, understanding the context that you're in community you're joining really matters. What opportunities you have to be a known quantity and to take action with your ideas is important. Um, next, just very quickly, um, I've alluded to this, location matters. You know, um, you know, being a case in, in an awesome city, being a, in Easton, PA, which is a small city of 30,000, but with access to New York and Philly, like understand that sometimes if you, if you isolate the body, you isolate the mind. And if you have a mind that's full of ideas, full of, full of interests that need to be explored, not to say you can't explore them in more rural spaces, you know, access to technology and the internet gives you, you global reach from your, your desktop. But, um, and from these strange devices that I, but, you know, I value that, you know, those students who want to take action in a marketplace um, tend to benefit from places and spaces that have access to um, significant populations and increasingly diverse populations. You know, I went to a wonderful liberal arts college up in the coast of Maine and had a wonderful experience growing up in the shadow of a liberal arts college in the middle of nowhere, Massachusetts. You know, you don't have a sense of the world necessarily in those spaces. You don't have a sense of the challenges and opportunities that exist. And at Lafayette and great colleges like it, um, you're here to figure out how you can apply your, your interests in science, technology, to solve issues and problems in the world. So the STEM fields and engineering, it's, it's not about stuff. It's actually about humanity and people when you think about it. So, you know, where you are um, absolutely matters. Um, and again, what happens here? You know, just a, a couple of quick hits that I think are important for those who are thinking about building a business and, and, and following the, their entrepreneurial spirit. You know, what happens in these places? Um, you know, learning and teaching is, is happens everywhere. But if there's this emphasis on applied learning, on, on, on internships, externships, you should know that. You know, that will promote opportunities you have to curate a story that's really powerful that will open up doors for you long term. You know, start building your network now. Understand that you, you, you're, you're curating an experience at a, at a college and a university in that community. So just be aware of what's happening there. And at Lafayette, you know, you know, we're not just, again, like I said, absorbing knowledge. Our professors are approaching you not as a student in their class, but as a scholar in their field. They want you to be original in your learning. They want you to develop the fortitude and confidence it takes to, to have questions and then answer those questions with research and applied learning and internships and externships and going abroad. So research and the creation of knowledge is something that I think you need to be thinking about. You know, if you are sort of gonna be pursuing your ideas and exploring them to significant depth, be in a place in a space and part of a community that fosters that kind of development and gives you the mentorship that you need and you deserve to be successful. And at places like Case and like Lafayette and, and wonderful universities like it, um, that support, that engagement is, is absolutely there. 
um, community engagement, you know, you're learning, you know, how you're thinking about the application of your wisdom and knowledge. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. And too often, I think young people approach college university as like, it's just a, a checkbox. I got to do this so I can move on in life. Um, but understand that, you know, we're part of, of larger communities at, at, at Case and, and, and at Lafayette. We're part of um, where we are. And I think for those who want to think about the impact they can have in a marketplace, um, either with new ideas or with a product or whatever it is, you know, understand, you know, the community engagement aspect of your college experience will, will matter. And so, again, that's where mindset, that's where setting and context totally matter. But think about approaching college with, hey, I'm not just here to go, you know, work in labs and, and you know, write some papers and, and be in my libraries. Um, you're in a community. And I think those students who find the most success in college and university entrepreneurially in, in the business front engage in their college university community, but also beyond and well beyond it in their immediate surroundings. So just understand that that I think is an important part of your search. So at Lafayette, just very quickly, um, you know, every college university in most cases these days will have sort of opportunities for those who are thinking about, you know, business and entrepreneurship. You know, at Lafayette, here are a couple of quick examples. Um, our Dyer Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Um, this is sort of a, a, a multidisciplinary medium that empowers professors and students to pool thinking and ideas. Um, acknowledging right now that this world is full of opportunities and full of challenge, that, you know, there's no one sort of solution to them. Um, solutions, you know, in addressing opportunity tend to come from all parts of the, the curriculum, all from across the disciplines. So the Dyer Center sort of creates a medium in a beautifully showcased space in our new 90,000 square foot integrated science facility. And the Dyer Center is in the heart of that. And it pulls um, students together from across the college to innovate and to be entrepreneurs. And I got a couple of examples in, in a hot second I'll get to. But also, you know, our Economic Empowerment and Global Learning Project. Um, really allows students, again, from across disciplines to address current issues and challenges that exist today in the moment. Whether it's you know, engaging with um, coffee farmers in Honduras to grow organically because that product um, has greater value when you're growing it organically in, in the global marketplace, um, to working with um, you know, organizations in Jamaica, you know, helping creating uh, mobile banking opportunities for its citizens because you can't really accrue and amass wealth if you don't have opportunities to sort of store it anywhere. And, you know, there are a lot of um, sort of countries out there where it's hard to be able to do that. So, again, it's just it's taking action with your learning. And, and Lafayette isn't we're not the only place that does this. A lot of universities and colleges do this, but it's on you to figure out what opportunities exist for me in these places and spaces. And then, you know, the tech clinic is, is a similar kind of opportunity that pulls you know, a lot of engineers um, and, and those involved in, in the arts and sciences together. To, um, to think about um, how to address a lot of the issues and problems that do exist out there. Now, just quickly before I pass it along, um, so the Dyer Center, just to go deeper into this, you know, this is the only fully endowed um, center for innovation entrepreneurship at any college in the country. There are universities with them, but you know, Lafayette has a college with a billion dollar endowment. We're not supporting law schools and hospitals and PhD programs. It's all about the undergraduate experience here. So I value that we have this, this well-endowed center that really empowers students to get after it, the proverbial it, have ideas, be energized, and, and, and be fearless in exploring them. So, you know, this past year, 840 participants with the Dyer Center, um, number of workshops, guest lectures, a number of competitions, um, some boot camps and conferences, you know, all sort of um, students putting them into, you know, places to build their network and to take action with their ideas. And just, you know, a new opportunity that exists here are our fellowships. You know, we're looking every year to, to create a cohort of dynamic, diverse students with different ideas, different thoughts, different backgrounds, culturally, ethnically, and socioeconomically to come together, recognizing that the future of our world, um, you need to be interculturally aware and competent and interested in other people, especially those with whom you share differences and be willing to sort of connect and work together in diverse groups. So building a cohort over four years that um, gives you access to significant resources to come together as a group and to go um, to work as a group, but also individually to pursue your thoughts, to pursue your ideas. You know, um, just thinking about some of the pitch competitions that happened here, I wanted to look at a quick outcome from one this past year. You know, I pulled a, a couple, um, you know, from, from this one that, that, you know, these span from a, 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 a thriving business called Young and Thriving, which is a student who arrived here um, uh, and was, you know, found challenge and, and had a really hard time sort of um, finding their footing academically because, you know, the way they learned and the way they went about high school wasn't working. So, you know, she, she sort of did her homework, did her research and happened upon a different kind of approach 
that um, could be contained and confined in a planner and a curriculum that empowers young people to find success more readily right out of college as they make this transition to college called Young and Thriving. You know, from that to um, simulating snow skiing on pavement and, you know, some mechanical engineers coming together with um, some economists creating a device where, you know, on, on, a, on a downhill with on grass or pavement, it feels like you're on snow. Um, so it runs the gamut. But Songs We Share was the winner this year. This is a student who, you know, created a, an app and a platform for students to uh, who have curated sort of playlists um, on any number of platforms to pull them together um, and to scan them and then to sort of find where their, their song choices and styles are the same and bring them together into a, a platform that you can mix all your friends' music in one space and play it together. So that was that was a winner. But, you know, VimSim, you know, this is... Um, you know, really a, a machine simulator, you know, giving, giving those um, haptic feedback to what it's like to work with manufacturing equipment um, to do it remotely. And then the Lafayette Easton Alliance is a group of students that are looking to connect and create a connection between uh, downtown business owners um, and the wants and needs of, of our students and creating cohesion and connection between town and gown. So just a couple of examples. So my belabored point here is the energy of a place counts and matters. Figure it out, find it, and, and allow yourself to wrap your head and heart around it. But it takes a little extra work and effort on your part to figure that out. The setting matters. Understand what that means as a fertile ground for your opportunities to be successful with your future business venture or your entrepreneurial ideas. Um, and then think about what actually happens in that space and how that can serve you beautifully as a student and a scholar, but also as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur. So I'm going to leave it there and be ready to add, answer whatever questions you have and pass it off to my friend and colleague, Ivy. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Ivy Petzinger. I'm a new admission counselor at Case Western Reserve University. Um, though I'm new in this role, I have been at the university for quite some time. I was an undergraduate student here. I did a couple things, did the Peace Corps, um, but then I came back, did a research fellowship here, and now I'm an admission counselor. So I'm really excited to share more with you all today, um, more about Case Western Reserve University and institutions like us and how you can really take advantage of the resources that you that we have to offer and that you as a student can, you know, really make the most of um, and talk a little bit more specifically about opportunities in business and engineering and entrepreneurship. Um, so yeah. I also have a PowerPoint, so let me, just a couple slides, um, but let me share my screen. Um, All right. Um, can everyone see that? Can anyone see that? Maybe Matt, can yes, you? Yes, we can see it. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so just a quick overview, Case Western Reserve University is a mid-sized research institution located in Cleveland, Ohio. So um, let me move actually my face off of this screen. Um, yeah, okay, so mid-sized research institution in Cleveland, Ohio, mid-sized, what that means, we have about 5,400 undergraduate students. So Matt was talking about Lafayette College and being a smaller institution, us mid-sized, but we still kind of like to say we're a small school with big school resources and so I mean similar to Lafayette College we really we have a low student to faculty ratio our faculty members really care about our students and as a student you are like the attention is given to you and you can really our students are unique and they can really take advantage of all of those opportunities we have to offer also our location is so important in Cleveland Ohio and university circle a very rich we're the number one arch arts district according to USA Today and just a really culturally packed um, neighborhood and we have we're a medical epicenter we have hospitals all around us the Cleveland Clinic University hospitals um, and our university has really strong partnerships with a lot of institutions so that's really great and important um, and as a student here in a with a smaller student body all of our students have access to really partnerships and opportunities at those different institutions um, and yeah, so to talk a little bit about what our university has to offer, we have four different colleges. Um, so we have our School of Engineering, our College of Arts and Sciences, we have our Weatherhead School of Management, and our Nursing School. But one thing that I think is really important to note is that when you apply to our university, you get accepted to the university as a whole. So you can take classes, you can add majors or minors, you have access to professors and all of the resources at all of those different colleges. Um, and we're super multidisciplinary and that is intentional. So as a student, you can 
um, really, and even as an institution, we have collaborations between our different schools and professors at different schools and things like that. And actually almost 80% of our students have more than just one major. And our most common, for example, is engineering and music. So really you have the opportunity at, to be flexible and connect the dots between your different passions and interests. And you know that's very relevant to what we're talking about today, building our business and STEM. Um, so yeah. Also, I mean, we are a research institution, a top tier research institution. So I like to mention that all of our faculty do research. And I think a lot of, a lot of the time people, when they think about research, they think of medicine and STEM. And definitely we have a lot of research there, but all of the schools that I mentioned, all of our professors um, for every major and minor and program we have, they all do research. So even in business and economics and things like that, um, we have faculty doing research. Um, and actually as an undergraduate student, 86% of our undergraduate students participate in research and creative endeavors. And we do have an office on campus. Um, it's called SOURCE for short, but it stands for Support of Undergraduate Research and Creative Endeavors. And they're really helpful for students in navigating these resources. Um, so Matt was mentioning, we have lots of opportunities, but it's kind of on you to have the initiative and have some ideas and go after them. But we do have a lot of support in place to help. You don't have to just know and do it all. Um, so this office, for example, is really helpful in finding and helping students find different opportunities that they might be interested in, in research or creative endeavors. They provide funding for students for these different opportunities. They host um, symposiums every year and things like that. Um, so that's just one of the many resources we have in place to help support you as a student and help you navigate all of the opportunities we have on campus. Um, yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna change the slide to talk a little bit about Thinkbox. Um, Thinkbox is really one of the most amazing spaces on our campus, and it's just an entire ecosystem of innovation. So it's seven stories of technology, and you can see here 50,000 square feet, um, and it's an open access maker space, the biggest one in the nation at any university, um, and actually to our knowledge, the world, um, but definitely at least the nation, the biggest open access makerspace. And to talk a little bit about what that means, open access, it is open to everyone, every major, and even to the public. Um, and you don't have to know how to utilize the tools and equipment in the space. All you have to do is show up, have some kind of idea or initiative to come, but we have staff and volunteers that work at Thinkbox who are there to help you make your idea a reality. So some of the examples, the different equipment we have in Sears Thinkbox include 3D printers, laser cutters, circuit board cutters. We have a word, wood shop, a metal shop. We actually have sewing machines. We have a paint room. We have a, a professional photography area and equipment. So those equipment are available and free access for everyone. Um, and yeah, again, you don't have to know how to use it either. And so students, come to Thinkbox for a wide variety of reasons. Some students might just be interested in a decoration for their dorm or making a gift for a friend or family member, but some students have ideas maybe from science fair projects or just an idea they thought of or a project in a class that they're taking. Um, and that can become a startup and you know can really start a trajectory that might be again, you know, a huge thing that becomes a really big part of their life. Um, and so I'll share some examples of that with you um, from some of our students and alumni. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about this space, Thinkbox. Um, but really quickly before I get into examples, I do want to also talk about LaunchNet, which is really related to our Thinkbox, but it is all of our resources that help our students turn those ideas into businesses or nonprofit organizations. They provide mentorship and things like that. So they're really just full of resources. And these are all, again, free for all of our students. Um, and they'll help students navigate different things like creating business plans, researching materials, providing funding and seed money for students to get started, um, helping students prepare for pitch competitions, helping students navigate intellectual property protection, um, and partnering with our law school's IP venture clinic so students can apply for patents, and much more. So those are a little bit about the resources and spaces we have on campus um, that relates to business and engineering and entrepreneurship. Um, 
and just a couple things like LaunchNet has helped over 500 students and alumni establish enterprises. We have really amazing startups and things that have come out of these places. And so to share one example, we've got Felipe. Um, he is really incredible. I actually saw him when I was a student at Case Western Reserve University. He came and did like a local TED talk on our campus. Um, and he's still really interactive with the campus. And he actually, he now, so you can see on the screen is founder and CEO of his startup at FGC Plasma Solutions. Um, but, but his company actually has Case Western Reserve University students intern there and he'll come back. He really enjoys um, spending time in ThinkBox. Um, yeah, so to backtrack for a minute where his story begins, it actually, his began as a science fair project in high school, at his high school in Florida. Um, and he has since, it has earned him a patent into over $6.1 million in funding. Um, but what his idea was, was to design a plasma assisted fuel nozzle to make jet engine more efficient and safe. Um, and so when he came to Case Western Reserve University and saw the think box, he really took that science fair project and ran with it. So his initial prototype he developed in ThinkBox, and then he found financing available through the ThinkBox Student Fund Project. He turned to Launchpad for business advice. He also turned to the Great Lakes Energy Institute for initial seed funds and mentorship. And he used the law school's IP Venture Clinic to work on patent applications. So those are all available through our LaunchNet, which is, again, also in partnership with ThinkBox and has a lot of presence on ThinkBox. Um, and yeah, if Felipe's idea has taken him to the White House where he presented on Shark Tank and he was honored by President Barack Obama as a global emerging global entrepreneur. He's been named in Forbes 30 under 30. He's now a visiting scientist at MIT. But like I said, he still comes back to Case Western Reserve University often. Um, and so yeah, he's one example of a student who used ThinkBox and that really set him up for success and really has kind of become such a big part of his life. Next, I want to talk about Butter. Um, Butter is a really awesome student that had an awesome idea that's very relevant to the COVID-19 pandemic. You can see his quote here. He said, I saw CWRU and ThinkBox as a playground to advance my career and my hobbies at the same time. ThinkBox was actually a big part of the reason that he came to Case Western Reserve University. He's always loved tinkering with things and things like that. Um, and yeah, he did lots of projects. I actually collaborated with him on a project um, when I did my research fellowship at ThinkBox. But I want to talk about the project that you see on the screen um, here today with you all. And so from, for some background, N95 masks are really important for hospital workers, especially um, on the front lines during COVID-19, but they can be hard to come by, especially in rural areas. And currently sterilization systems that exist in hospitals to reuse them take up to an hour um, to sterilize them. So Butter and ThinkBox really come in here. His idea was to decon decontaminate N95 masks faster. And this machine that he built that you see here, it's called Suds and it will decontaminate N95 masks in under a minute. So um, that's really beneficial uh, to COVID and um, accessibility of resources and things like that. And yeah, Butter is currently in the process of commercializing and getting the Suds machine into hospitals. Um, he just finished his undergraduate degree at Case Western Reserve University in electrical engineering. He's now doing his master's here and he hopes to one day create his own engineering design company and public access maker space in Pakistan where he is from. Um, but yeah, that's another example of a student. And lastly, I don't have like a, a screen that's prepped like this because um, these are from our marketing, but I wanted to share about one other student that was a friend of mine named Sila. She had, she launched her startup ParaHug at Case Western Reserve University when I was studying alongside her in 2017. And what ParaHug does, it makes electronically connected teddy bears that let loved ones hug one another from a distance. And it really brings together humanity and that technological connection. Um, so it started, you know, from a hackathon project into a Kickstarter phase, and it's really been amazing to just see my friend and her startup and ParaHug do really well, even before the pandemic. And, you know, of course, throughout the pandemic, when loved ones were separated, um, just to see that really grow and thrive. Um, yeah, and these are all just classmates of mine. These are not people who, I would say these are not the exception. Um, this is kind of, all of our students are very exceptional. 
Um, and our phrase here, kind of our, our tagline is think beyond the possible. Um, really, your imagination is the limit at Case Western Reserve University and other institutions like this. Um, we have so many resources in place. Our faculty really care about students. Our offices and staff really care about students and care about the resources that they provide. Um, so yeah, hopefully these examples could get, give you a little bit of inspiration and you might have resonated with a thing or two that you heard about, but really it's like the opportunities are endless and it's up to you. Um, like Matt was mentioning, it's, you know, if you, it, but like what we like to say here at Case Western Reserve University, it's not about what you can do, it's about what you will do. So um, we have the resources in place and you are amazing students. So hopefully you've learned some things. We have tons of information, of course, online as well. And I can share my contact information if you have any more additional questions, but um, that's pretty much what I had to share today for this panel. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to do questions now if you want, Matt, if we have any. Um, yeah, sure. oh, here, let me yeah. stop sharing the screen. Yeah, that's all good. No, I've been keeping on the Q and A. Looks like we've uh, we've given everything they need. There's no no questions that I can see out there. Um, well, awesome. But uh, I, again, I mean, I'm inspired. Uh, thanks for <laughs> thanks for thanks for sharing that. I and thank the, you. Also. The, the the sort of the point um, I'm hoping that we've driven home is opportunity is abound. Period. Hard stop. You know the fact that you're here at least in Eastern Eastern Daylight Time at you know, 5.30 on a, on a Tuesday, it means that you're going to be really thoughtful and deliberate about um, finding opportunity. Um, but understand that you're not going this alone. You know, um, there, Ivy and I are two of thousands and thousands of admissions folks who want to be helpful and supportive to you in your college search. And, you know, if, if you really are owning um, sort of STEM engineering and an entrepreneurial mindset as part of your college search, don't, don't apologize for that. You know, to own it with pride and confidence. It'll be well received by by Ivy, by me, and, and our counterparts across the country and around the world. Um, so I do see one question that's popped up here, and it's for you, Ivy. Um, does oh, does Case Western own any portion of student creations? That's a good question. That is a good question, and I do want to answer this accurately. I'm pretty sure that I've learned about so many different projects at Thinkbox, and I'm pretty sure some students have their own when it is their idea and some projects that students have done with professors or with the university i think when it that is the case like if a student is working on a project that is really the university's in that case they do own a portion of it but i believe when it's student led and run that's all the student um yeah so it depends on you and your kind of how you want to go about that and what kind of projects you might be a part of or really be leading but yeah. Yeah, no, I think you, you know that it, it's a all depends, but I think we, you know, it, you I think where the funding's coming from and if the college universities are part of that, there's a likelihood that they'll be, uh, have significant ownership over any kind of patent that does emerge. Um, but, you know, it's all a negotiation. Um, so get to the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What other questions are out there that we can be helpful with? Oh, here's another one. Let's see. Um, so how common are startup among undergraduates? Um, so I'll, I'll start and then pass it to you, Ivy. Um, increasingly more and more common. Um, I think Gen Z, your generation, um, um, recognizes, understands that um, you can take action now and you have never had, I guess humanity has never had more access to information um, and um, we have an understanding that there are many, many more students who arrive with ideas um, of what they want to explore and maybe bring to fruition. Um, but at the same time, we're going to push students um, hard, I think, in, in all cases to understand that you don't know what you don't know. So you don't have all the answers. Don't pretend that you do, especially at 17, 18 ish year, years old. You know, you have a lot to learn. And, you know, I value that, you know, students who come out of high school and land in places like Case and Lafayette recognize like, oh, wow, there's a lot for me to uh, dive deeper into. Um, you know, my guess is, you know, your high schools don't have biomolecular and chemical engineering departments like Case and Lafayette do. You know, my guess is, you know, you don't have anthropology and sociology departments um, the way that, that our universities or colleges do. So, uh, you know, I think um, we have an expectation that, yeah, totally fine to come here um, and to, to innovate and, and, and start taking action right out of the gate, but also 
time out, like take a beat and understand that you have a lot to learn and we wanna be a part of that experience. So we are seeing more and more students arrive with the, uh, with the expectation that they're gonna take action with their ideas um, and, and bring it to life. But also I think the ones that are most successful are the ones that open up their heart and mind to other opportunities and other people and pull them into the experience. Yeah, definitely. And I think that might develop over the years as well. Maybe you come in, you have a lot to learn, but you start getting connected and learning and are maybe a part of different projects and learn how to use some of this different equipment or start having some access to some of these entrepreneurial type projects and groups and things like that. And so maybe at first you are like a part of a group or help or something like that, but maybe by your junior or senior year, that startup is a little bit more of a reality or something like that. Um, but yeah, definitely we do have a lot of resources in place. And like Matt mentioned, more and more common. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I know the Thinkbox is also really intentional. I know the director of Thinkbox was talking about how important it is to help. He, he really is passionate about helping students and helping kind of students and their reputations as well, because sometimes it's hard to meet with an investor in a dorm room but we have spaces in Thinkbox where you can meet with investors and we have a lot of mentorship and support there. Um, so I think there's a lot of things in place to help you get there, um, for sure. So Ivy, I'm gonna to toss this one to you uh, while you're on a roll. Um, yeah. uh, can you tell us about your biomedical engineering program? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is one of, it's a very prestigious, highly ranked, great faculty, great research, things like that. Um, and wide variety of research. I know one that's like really popular though is prosthetics, especially with all the hospitals around and collaborations with healthcare. Um, but yeah, biomedical engineering is a popular, strong, awesome, one of our many engineering programs. I don't know if there's any specific questions you want to know about it, but we also have a really robust website as well um, where you can read about like the different faculty and projects and resources and things like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's a great question. And, you know, biomedical engineering, it, it, it exists in different ways across institutions. You know, there are a number like case, you know, big uh, sort of opportunities that are there, you know, biomed cases, it's a known quantity and very, very competitive and selective. There's no doubt about it. Um, but at the same time, you know, there are a number of, of institutions that don't offer it, it with the same kind of language um, it, for lots of different reasons. I mean, in the end, biomedical engineering really is electrical engineering. <laughs> um, and, and, and like a mixture, yeah. Going together, computer engineering, and all sort of flowing together there. So you know that's where at Lafayette, you know, we do have um, a bachelor of science in interdisciplinary engineering and bioengineering is in that space. So it's not a, you know a professional degree program like it is a case, but a lot of colleges will offer it in, in a way that that, that we do. Um, so again, I think it's that's the the challenge um, when you have a really tight focus on. I think I know I want this. Like explore it but also open up your your mind like, wait, there's other ways of, of maybe arriving at the same end point. There's actually billions of ways to get there. Um, but you know, you gotta figure out what path makes the most sense for you. So it looks like we have time for one more question and there is one more question. Nope, it's a, it's a response. I will check out the website. That's nice, love it. So um, Ivy, it was a, a pleasure sort of seeing you and meeting you. Um, thanks. Yes. And Nishira, thanks for creating a space for us. Anything that you need to wrap up with? And I'll just say thank you everyone who attended today. It was really great getting to share with you all. And like Matt was mentioning, it's awesome. A great sign that you're here today. Um, show some initiative as well and interest. And yeah, we hope you learned some things and enjoyed. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, here we go. I think Nashir is taking over. I am. Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you all for this panel. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, I also encourage you to check back in the, with the schedule and sign up for more sessions. Uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com forward slash cachet. Thank you.